Hi guys, so today I have posted one very simple question, but it's a tricky question for your ADC part 1 exam and uh, I've decided that I'll post on Facebook and make a video out of it and give you the explanation so you understand what you're doing. So you can also read a bit more about this question. Now let's just see what is this question. So the question is, Three days following difficult extraction of a mandibular wisdom tooth, your patient re-attended with severe persistent dull ache and fatigued odor from the socket. Your management may normally include all of the following except. See, when you are in an exam and a question comes like this, you will read, and immediately your mind will jump to, oh, it's a dry socket. And you will immediately start excluding the options that you will not do for the dry socket. But has the question asked you or specifically specified that this is a dry socket? It has given you symptoms which can be dry socket or it can be an infection. You don't know. So, since they have not specifically mentioned dry socket, you cannot jump to the conclusion that it is a dry socket. So, again, let's read the question. So, in your exam, you have to read the question twice. The first is a basic reading and the second is finding the keywords. So, three days following difficult extraction of a mandibular wisdom tooth, your patient re-attended with severe persistent dull ache. Now, it can also be because something was left behind or the patient did not follow the instructions or there is something else, you know, because the question is not saying the patient is coming to you with a dry socket and feed it order from the socket. Your management may normally include all of the following except. Here the keyword is except and the keyword is also the symptom. So, this is the symptom. So, I understand you will be very tempted to jump to the dry socket, but you should not. You should have the probable diagnosis with you. And, and thinking like this will also help you in your part 2 exam. When in cluster 1, in OSCEs, you would have information gathering. And uh, a similar question can be asked and the uh, question would be gather more information and provide your management plan. So even in that, without the full investigations, you cannot just directly get the diagnosis as dry socket. You will fail in that cluster if you do that. You have to gather as much as information regarding how it happened and explain to the patient the investigations that you would be doing and then give them the management plan. So basically, these options are the management plans. All of them would be correct except which one so basically the question is trying to ask you in your first visit with this patient who has come to you with a lot of pain after the extraction what is the first line of treatment that you would be doing so let's see what you can do in this particular appointment watch this socket with a warm saline solution now it can happen that there's a lot of food debris and you actually cannot see the socket and uh, since the patient is having a lot of pain and there is odor also it's, it's quite possible that a lot of food debris is there so washing the socket with a warm saline solution is right you can do in the first appointment dress the socket with eugenol containing dressing now even if it's a dry socket or it's it's plain loss of the blood clot or there is slight infection in the socket, you can always do a dressing. Usually you call it as alveogel. It has combination of eugenol and iodoform and a painkiller. So that would like act as an optendent dressing. Basically, it would reduce the pain immediately. So, you can do this. Take a check radiograph. So, you want to just make sure that nothing else is stuck inside, no root piece is left, no bony fragment is lying loose in the socket that you can't see. So, uh, it's doable. 
Now coming to option E, I will discuss option D. Coming to option E, which most of you people have answered as the right option, but it is not. And then you will feel why this, this question is wrong. I have marked the right answer and you would be confident about it. Option E is if not contraindicated. Prescribe a course of metronidazole antibiotic. See, I understand you must have read therapeutic guidelines and it says that uh, antibiotics are not uh, indicated in case of dry socket. Correct. But has the question told you it's a dry socket? No. What if it was an infection? The symptom would still be the same. If, if the socket would have been infected and uh, there would still be, a, say, a blood clot is present there, uh, but still the socket is infected or there is a partial blood clot there and still the socket is infected, then uh, why wouldn't you give an antibiotic? Of course you will give an antibiotic if it is not contraindicated. And even in alveolar osteitis, that is a dry socket, The if, if all you have done in your first line of treatment and still oh, there is infection developing, in spite of that being a dry socket, you would again give an antibiotic. Of course, it won't be your first line of treatment. But in this particular question, they have not mentioned that it's a dry socket. So your probable diagnosis is dry socket and infection. And if it was infection and you found it, and if it's not contraindicated, you can prescribe a course of metronidazole. So that option is right. Now coming to the option D, cure it out of the socket wall. See, the first line of treatment, even if, say, you had decided in your mind it was dry socket, the first line of treatment is never curatage of the socket wall. It's the second line of treatment. The first line is you will do a dressing of alveolar gel. Ask the patient to come after three to five days. If the area is healing, you leave it. But in spite of giving the dressing, if still the area is not healing, then you will numb that area and then you will curate or actually you don't curate you kind of poke the socket a bit or drill a bit in the bone to induce uh, bleeding so that the blood clot is formed but that is not your line of treatment when the patient is coming to you first time after having the extraction done with this kind of complaint so the answer becomes d not E. I know you would be like, uh, oh, I did not think of this. But these are the kind of silly mistakes that you people will do in the exam. And hence, reading the question, understanding it, even though it may look like a very simple question, is very, very important. So, uh, to all my enrolled candidates, uh, I am preparing a very nice... Uh, mock of just oral surgery where I would be putting a lot of questions like these which would make you think more analyze more and give you feedbacks and explanations and wherever references possible so uh, for this question also I have a good reference of two books and I would be including that along with the entire explanation that I've said anyways I'm uploading this video in the YouTube so you can have an access to it whenever you can but uh, this is just one of the questions and I have like more than 50 such questions. Uh, I, I won't be shooting all the 50 questions on the YouTube, but uh, simple questions like these which are tricky, I would be doing that as and when possible. So I hope this explanation is clear and you understand that where your mind is tempted to take you and commit a mistake, questions like these are simple but they trap you. So, analyzing them is the key for you to passing the exam. Understood? Thank you.